Today we're at Alloy Metal Fabricators and we've contracted out with them to build fuel tanks for these boats that we rebuild, recondition, these, restoring these classic boats. And we've been dealing with Phil here at Alloy for like three years and he's done excellent work for us. We're very happy with the product he turns out. And uh, we're just going to take a look at the kind of things that go into this kind of boat production right down to all of the accessories and all of the essentials like a fuel tank which in a 30 year old boat you have to change. So Phil's the man to do it. Alloy metal fabricating and we're going to see how they build a tank. Phil's going to take this sheet, it's 1 8 aluminum, which is the standard in the industry of, for tanks, and they're going to cut it. My tank has to be 78 inches long, so he's going to cut it 77 and 3 quarters, and then the two ends when they're welded in become 78 inches. So first thing to do is take the basic stock sheet and cut it. Ready to start. 77 three quarter? Yeah. Come back towards me. More. More. You got three quarters of an inch. I right, stop. Now we're going into the bending machine, right, Phil? Yeah, There's the bender. It's a brake. Alright. Now going this is called the brake. They're gonna put the piece of material in there and they're gonna create the bends. You can see the schematic of the tank up above. You know, a rough facsimile. That's going to be the bottom of the tank. That's the top of the tank. They didn't overlap flush. They left this groove because then when they run a bead, they're gonna weld it, aluminum weld it, and they got that, that track, that edge to fill with weld. So it's gonna be, you know, airtight, gasoline tight. It's gonna be a good, a good union of the two pieces of material. And you can see the basic outline now. This is the tank, top of the tank, bottom. They tacked it and then they're going to do the final weld, put the baffles and so forth in. All right. Well, Phil is cutting either the ends of the tank, well that looks like an end of the tank, or maybe baffles. And a baffle is just a piece, it's like a partition to keep the gas from sl sloshing around in the tank. And it just has, look what, the corners cut off? The corners are cut off. It will be the full shape of the tank. Right. Right. So what happens, if you have a big tank like this, 120 gallons, if it's half full and you start the boat, you move forward, all that gas rushes to the back very quickly and it offsets the weight and center of gravity of the boat. So they build partitions in the tank 
with corners cut away. So the gas will flow through those small openings, but gradually as the boat settles on a particular angle when you're running. Uh, what Phil's doing now is measuring up the position of all of the attachments to the tank. The fill tube, the pickup tube, the sender, and the vent. So I drew a schematic for him. It worked great on the last boat, exactly same schematic. So he's, I gave him measurements, distances from front and back of tank, and that's what he's marking off now. They're going to cut these holes and put the hardware on. Vent, fill. Okay. At the... Uh, Slight, yeah. slight angle, all yeah. To the port side. Yep, all to the port. That's it. Go for it. This is the latest technology in sender units. Years ago, fuel senders were a bent arm with a float on the end. It was a kind of mechanical thing with a rheostat in it. That's all ancient history. Give you inaccurate readings. This is the new variety. It works on a magnetic float, magnetized. And as this travels, it acts like a rheostat along this rod. They come in different lengths for different size tanks, all stainless steel. These are the best on the market. Gives you very, very accurate fuel readings. That's what you want to have. The best you can put in any boat. And these things, the way they're made, they have five holes, but they're not symmetric. So yeah, that's going to be good. Drill and tap. He has to do each one separately because that pattern has to be perfectly in line. That's a baffle. Now you can see, looking at this baffle, how it will prevent rapid movement of fuel, but the fuel can filter through those little gaps that are built into it and slowly equalize its position in the tank instead of sloshing down to one end and creating all of that momentum of moving liquid in your boat. Yeah, here at Alloy, as in most places that fabricate like this, you know, they have all their stock. They make everything from scratch. So they get bulk tubing, bulk sheet, they cut the tubing as they need it, they fabricate it and make it into these pieces, these 90 degree angles, various diameters, so they have all kinds of pipe stock, flat stock, eighth inch, three sixteenths, and so forth, you know? So everything is handmade uh, to exacting specifications. The only part that is purchased by them is the sender unit, which comes from another company is outsourced. But uh, everything made from scrap, it's amazing to watch the process happen. They're really talented people. Phil, he's making the pick up the fill tube and the vent tube right now. So he's TIG welding it, and uh, those are the attachments that are going to go on top of the tank. The 
put gas in and to allow air to come in and take its place, the vent, the vent tube. Sometimes you need a slight adjustment. Sometimes you gotta make some noise. Yeah. All right, he cut width and height. Now he's gonna scribe this odd kind of angle. Now he's making finer tuning cuts on it. Yeah, we want to go edge to edge on the welding. So edge to edge, you leave you leave the gap, or you want it flush? No, I want it edge to edge. Edge to edge. Edge to edge, you get full penetration out of it. Of when you put the bead on it. Oh, All right. Yeah, edge. I see what you're saying. Edge to edge. Right. Edge to edge, edge to edge. Edge to edge, leaving edge you that. Edge. That this way when you weld it, it, it penetrates through. You can see we got the final weld. The seam is completely sealed. All right, all the way. He tacked it in place first, and then he did a nice, beautiful, perfect weld. You can tell he's he's great with the with the TIG welder. It's very smooth, very uniform, all the way around. Now the the welding process is kind of interesting. There are various types of welding. Uh, there's MIG welding, TIG welding, stick welding, and different materials, of course. It could be aluminum, stainless steel, iron, ste whatever. But here, for this material uh, and the type of welds they need to make, uh, the TIG welder is their basic tool. Uh, interesting, though, aluminum being a very, uh, a very active metal, it oxidizes extremely quickly. And if you heat it up and you're in contact with oxygen, it will actually change the surface of the metal and it will interfere with the weld being perfect. So what they do is they flood the area. In the welding torch itself, there's actually a flow of argon gas that comes out of, you can see a storage tank over there next to the welder. Argon is an inert gas and no oxidation can occur when the argon is completely enveloping the whole welding spot. So when he's welding out of that torch, not only is there electricity which makes the weld happen, but there's also a flow of argon gas being pushed down there to keep the atmosphere totally non-oxygen, all right? And so the weld then can be perfect and it won't interfere with the composition of the metal. Well, we're wrapping it up here at Alloy Metal Fabricators. We got uh, Phil and we got John, he's spraying, looking for leaks. We got Tom helped us out today. Anyway, the final test is going to be when everything is secured, all the wells are done, all the fittings are on, they're going to pressurize the tank to 3 PSI, 3 pounds per square inch of pressure, and then continue to spray the wells and make sure there are no bubbles and that the pressure remains constant. That means the tank uh, is totally sealed. There are no leaks whatsoever, which is very, very important. Uh, when that's done, the tank is going to go out for powder coating and then uh, we'll pick it up and it's going to be installed in our 23 foot Mako. So thanks guys. Thanks Phil. Thank you John. Thank you. Thank you my man. Thanks Tom. It was a great day. Thanks for your experience and your knowledge.